Hello everyone, my name is Araceli Garcia and I am the ELA TOSA for secondary schools at Hacienda La Puente Unified School District and I wanted to do a little uh, series of lessons, activities that you might be able to do in your classes when, well, when sometimes our technology is not working or when we just want our students to unplug from their devices and interact with one another. I do work as a a facilitator for UCLA Center X where we have a program called design-based learning and that's where we do all, all about project-based hands-on student-centered lessons and units so if you want more information please uh, you can send me a message so let's go ahead and jump in so the one of the lessons that you can do with your students is uh, some hands-on projects, right? So I always like to start with this graphic to talk about the students of today. So let me take a moment and just kind of highlight some of these and you could definitely pause the video and read these on your own. But I love this graphic because it highlights the idea that our students sitting in our classroom might be different from the way we used to learn. And we have to accept that the pandemic and distance learning changed our society and definitely changed our students. And so a couple of things I want to uh, highlight is, for example, number one, our students are social. Um, they like to interact. Even if they're standing around with their cell phones in hand, they're sharing music and videos and pictures, right? Uh, they're constantly talking. Uh, video gaming, for example, a lot of times they're video gaming with other people, right, online. Uh, they're also multitaskers. They are a generation that likes to keep things going. It's very hard for them to sit there for a long period of time. Even watching a movie is difficult for our students. I always talk about how my own children will sit down and watch a movie, but they have a laptop and a cell phone, right? And so that's kind of the world that they live in. Uh, well, of course, we want them to practice how to focus, and that's a scaffolded um, you know, activity that we can get them to focus a lot more and more. But also, you know, how do we keep our lessons going and exciting? Our students are interested in entrepreneurship, so if I can give a space in my classroom where they can share something that they made, uh, that's a real world type of, of skill to have. Uh, what else? Oh, our students are also uh, very interactive, so lessons where they're sharing and talking and writing uh, and participating in decision making, problem solving, those are all going to be great ideas in the classroom. Um, and the last one, cautious. Uh, because of distance learning and just kind of some of the things maybe because of social media, our students are very wary of, weary of you know, putting things out there, raising their hand possibly. So even though they're social, they sometimes hold back. And so, uh, you know, they kind of got used to the cameras off, muted and not participating, being passive in the classrooms. So I highly encourage you to encourage them or to really encourage them to participate in activities, to interact, to work on teams, to work with partners, because again, the world that they are going into will be demanding that of them. Uh, remind them that yes, AI and robots can do lots of things, but what it cannot do is have that personal touch. And that's where they come in. So let's keep going. All right. So on YouTube, uh, you know, you can find this video. This is a great little video that you can watch on your own to show you how to do these sculptures. Um, but what else do we have? Um, you can, again, it's very simple. I'm going to show you just a couple of simple ways that you can do that. And let me go here. Let's see if I could make this a little bigger. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, how I would do these foil sculptures. Again, there are a lot of YouTube videos that can help you, um, you know, show these in class if you're able to, or just, you know, you can do your own demonstration. So first of all, uh, you can either ask your students to bring in some foil, or I sometimes go just to the 99 cents or Dollar Tree store and look for these. So these I like because they're already pre-cut, right? And so it's a 30 sheets, right? They're 12 by 10 inches. Um, they're very light. Right? They don't hurt kids' uh, fingers, right? They're not going to cut them. So I, I like this. And so what I do is I take a sheet and I like to make the following lines. So something like that. One in the middle and two on the side. Okay? And so I'm going to take some scissors. And again, you can have them cut it with their hands very carefully. But I'm going to use scissors and I'm just going to cut along those lines. So in the middle and then two on the side. Okay, very simple. All right, 
then, and this is, uh, you know, you have to be careful if you're working with very little ones. I have done this activity with uh, very young kids and they tend to be very kind of perfectionist. And if they mess up, you know, they might have some tears. So just be ready to give them uh, maybe another sheet uh, or tell them it's okay. You know, that's one of the great things about project base is that it doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay to make mistakes. And sometimes you can even make beautiful mistakes, right? Um, and, and figure out how can you solve this problem now? Okay, so here's my little cutout, right? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of let it push it in. And what I do, again, I might show this in front of class, right? Is just kind of take those parts and very lightly kind of squish those in, right? And as you can see here, start to see the form, right? So there's our little guy there, right? And so with the head, I'm gonna make it more kind of like a little ball, right? And so here I have a little bit of a sculpture, right? So what can you do with this? So whether they're, you know, you're working with elementary kids, secondary, right? Um, I've done this even with my senior AP Lit class when we study characterization, right? So you could do all kinds of things. So here's a little sculpture. Now you might come up with some different ideas. You might say you're going to make a self sculpture of you doing your favorite activity. So the student might get maybe two sheets of foil, right? So one for their sculpture and one for an accessory. They can do construction paper. I've seen people decorate these with capes and hats and all kinds of things, right? If you wanted to give them a stand, you can definitely have them, you know, you can glue these down, tape them down on a little piece of cardboard, right? So you could do something like that. Uh, here I went ahead and created one and I was thinking of my daughter who loves to play the saxophone. So I created a little saxophone there for her, right? So she might write about her favorite hobby, right? And so again, you can have students doing an activity. Maybe they're kicking a soccer ball. Maybe they're writing. Maybe they're putting on headphones, right? So let their imagination run. You might do a few of these. Maybe they read a novel. I'm an ELA teacher, so maybe they read um, Romeo and Juliet. Maybe they're going to do a scene. Maybe they're going to work together in a group and create a scene of the Montagues and the Capulets, right? Or Romeo and Juliet on that balcony. So again, I'm trying to give you some ideas of things that you can do to kind of change things up if you're finding that, you know, we're kind of running out of ideas. So let's say you don't have foil paper. I've even done this with just regular paper. So you can do the same thing. So there we are, some regular paper. And we same thing, I'm going to take scissors. I'm just going to cut that in the middle, put that on the sides. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'll tell the students to be very careful here. So now I'm going to just crunch that paper, right? In the center, begin with this leg, begin with the arm, and then with the hand, right? And so one of the things with project faces that really makes them Again, you know, as we say, think out of the box. There's no perfect one way of doing this. And if they make a mistake, it's okay. It's part of learning. How do we go back, change things up, learn from what we made, right? So here we have another little sculpture there, right? And, you know, online on YouTube, you can find so many uh, awesome examples of these sculptures. Uh, where people have done dragons and lions and right uh, ballerinas, I mean, you name it. So again, whether you have foil paper or not, you can have a little sculpture there. Again, you can dress that up. You can put this on a little board where they can write. And so uh, here I'm going to show you now some lessons that you can do with this. So again, just a quick little hands-on. Notice it took me just a few minutes, so you can take some time out of your class, get them to do some, some projects there. All right, let me go ahead and move on to, well, what can you do with this? So take a look at some of these here. I'll move my face here. Uh, playing a guitar, reading a book, right? Doing those activities. So really creating that sense of, of team uh, spirit, right? Uh, having your students cheer each other on on their uh, little designs. Uh, and getting to know your students a little bit more, right? Um, all right, so what can you do? So here's some ideas of how I might have students present. You could keep it really, uh, you know, basic. 
you can have them pair up right to an ab partners and they can just say how does it represent you i usually like to use a timer person one is going to speak for one two minutes person two is going to listen and then flip you might have them do questions right okay ask each other some questions you can do this in small groups uh, i like this idea of a small group and then they have to vote on one let's say they're voting on let's say you're studying um you know civic engagement and what makes a good leader you might have them vote for a class leader, right? Uh, you can do a whole group presentation and really build that classroom spirit, right? Especially during this time that students might be feeling stressed, um, just show, show them off, right? Do a little catwalk, if you will, with your sculptures. What else can we do? Um, here's some interview questions. So you're definitely, and I will uh, give you a handout here that you can print on your own if you wish. And so you can ask them, you know, to describe their foil sculptures and what inspired them. Um, they can talk about the steps, right? So talking about logical steps, what did they do first? This would be a great activity for your English learners, especially, right? What techniques, uh, what uh, was a challenge, right? What are you, what would you celebrate? Uh, things like that, right? If you wanted to add some math, you can do some size and scale, right? Um, here's a couple of other ones that I liked. Maybe, uh, you know, can you add it to a theme or like I said, connect it to some kind of readings that you did? Uh, I like uh, this one. What emotions or messages do you hope viewers will experience or take away from your sculpture? Is there, can you express something, right? Uh, how does it represent your own personal style? So lots of different things there. Uh, how about some writing? All right, so they can do some writing and hear some prompts, right? Some descriptive, some reflective. Uh, you can read those on your own. Maybe some persuasive or we are coming upon, right? Uh, poetry month and so forth. So what about uh, some poetry? And one of the ones that I love is an I am poem. And I'm going to go ahead and send this to you. This is Google uh, Slides and you can have them do an I am poem, right? Yes, I know it's you know, almost towards the end of the year for some of you. But I always like to do who was I at the beginning of the year and who am I now? So maybe they do two sculptures. Who were you freshman year? Who are you now as a senior, right? So those are so deep uh, to show growth, right? Things that how they have uh, changed their view of life maybe or their future. So having them do an I am poem based on their sculpture would be a great idea. Here's a sample one. And so you can pause it and read it. Right, the, they can incorporate the fact that they're shiny because they're a foil, they're bendable, they're flexible, right? Uh, they can take on many shapes. So, so many things that you can do uh, with just vocabulary, right? With the idea of having a foil represent who they are. So this is a fun one about being a, a soccer player, right? As a sculpture. All right. Um, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much. If you would like some more ideas or like to schedule, especially if you work for HLP USD and would like to schedule a PD, I'm also available uh, for anyone, actually. If you want to contact UCLA Center X, I'm always willing to put on workshops and work at for schools on ways that you can do DBL, design-based learning, or some project-based lessons. Thank you so much, and I hope this was helpful for you.